Now, as many of you will be aware, Laurie Anderson is in town at the moment in her capacity as director of the Meltdown Festival. But, as I discovered when I met up with her at the South Bank recently, she has more irons in the fire at the moment than you can shake a stick at. There's the opera, the album, the window dressing for Hugo Boss's shop in Regent Street, and, of course, the musical relationship with her new boyfriend, Lou Reed. And although we did get round to talking about Meltdown in the end, she began the debriefing with an account of her electronic theatre company. Electronic Theatre electronic. Company, actually called etc. is its short short form for for it. And it's um, something I've been trying to do for about a year and a half. And I um, think I'm finally about to put it together. It came out of this frustration of, you know, got back from a tour and there are these big trucks, you know, chock full of stuff, you know, computers and screens and projectors and all sorts of digital equipment. And 20 people who are going, well, that was fun, now what do we do? And I go, well, now we unpack the trucks and put it in storage and I look for another commission, like every other artist in the world, you know, and I've lived this way for all my life as an artist. So I thought, well, what would I do if I could do anything I wanted? I actually sat down and wrote a five-year plan I decided to try to link projects, you know, so I, I outlined the, these four big theater things, an opera based on Moby Dick, a, a piece based on human and computer memory called ROM, um, and then a lot of the other kinds of things that I do, which involve uh, visuals and installations and CD-ROMs and records and, you know, so on, and thought, well, how can, how can I sort of draw dotted lines in between the, the, these ways of working and have a little bit more consistency? Anyway, I put all my life's work into a box, and it fits into a distressingly small box, you know, and shipped it off to a, should be at this moment, unnamed software magnate, and said, I am looking for a Medici. Would you be a Medici? Expecting, a, you know, absolute zilch. And got an answer saying, uh, yeah. I would consider that. So my new partner will be a software company, and we'll try to make these range of pieces and with some a little bit more consistency in terms of the people that I work with and the and the equipment. So even though I'm interested in working in very stripped down ways, I also have ambitions to to work on some big pieces. There, it's so much fun to work on big pieces. I love being in groups of people, and I'm a you know, this makes it easier to work with groups of people. This company, you mean? Yeah. yeah, I think it will. So it's it's very exciting. But I know again that I'm going to get a lot of flack for this. You know, kind of what a sellout! Oh my God, software. Oh, so. It was the night flight from Houston. Almost perfect visibility. You could see the lights from all the little Texas towns far below. And I was sitting next to a 52-year-old woman who had never been on a plane before. And her son had sent her a ticket and said, Mom, you've raised 10 kids. It's time you got on a plane. She was sitting in the window seat, staring out. And she kept talking about the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper and pointing. And suddenly, I realized that she thought we were in outer space, looking down at the stars. And I said, you know, I think those lights down there are the lights from little towns. How is your recording career going? What's, what, what have you got planned? What's you happening with around? that? Well, the, I, I think the next thing is going to be a very wacky retrospective, and then, then it's going to go off into a completely different direction. I, I never find it very easy to talk about what I'm working on at the moment. But the music that, for, for example, for some of these live things is, I'd say, looser and less tech-oriented than in the past, which is really nice. And it comes really from playing more violin, because as you get deeper into computer-generated music, 
you know, unless you know how to make it less stiff, it's awful because it's, it's programs. I mean, they have a kind of weird lifelessness. It's hard to dequantize these things so that it, they don't sound like just another big machine clunking away. So I'm kind of having a reaction to that kind of, you know, and kind of going into another time frame, a slower one in some ways. If you can um, relax samples, it can feel more organic, of course. You know, I'm not as good as, at that as I would like to be, so that's one of the things I'm trying to learn as a programmer. You play something very free and then figure out what you like of that, and then you can fly it around and be loose-fingered as you do that which it's just, you know, then becomes another way to improvise and loosen it up. Have you, have you learned any ways of working or seen any different ways of working through knowing and living with Lou Reed, playing with him? I'm louder, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Crank up uh, more digital effects. It's a lot of fun because we were playing on instruments designed by the same person, uh, a designer named Ned Steinberger, and he's designed a very, very few violins, but they're very beautiful because each, you know, they're basically violas. So you can really, when you process them, as I usually do, you can hit some very rumbly low notes. Your range is like huge. So it becomes a very big instrument. And combined with the guitar, it has, it's a very interesting uh, sound that when we play together for fun, we can't define this new, new thing. So it's, it's, it's fun to do that when you don't know what you're making. So yeah, we play together with no ambitions whatsoever to record it or play it in public. And that, to me, that is the biggest relief, really. What sort of music are you interested in these days? Well, let's see. I'm more attracted, as I said before, to things that are not so mechanical. So the part of rap that isn't mechanical, I love. You know, that, that's kind of real scrappy. I probably like anything that has really inventive and crazy words. I mean, that's all, always been my take, rather than listen to that chord progression. You know, to me, that, that it always has to support the language, and if it doesn't do that, then I'm not so interested. Paradise is exactly like where you are right now. gotten stuck in one of those abstract chances and he was going and Fred says I think he's in some kind of pain I think it's a pain cry and I said pain cry then language is a virus it's a virus. many of the things that I do come out of words or looking at images. My studio is a half visual and half audio. The layout is looks like that. There's sliding glass doors in between and whenever I'm working on something I'm looking at usually at pictures. You know I try to I guess yeah learn how to write differently that way into a different kind of rhythm. Is it harder for you to make to put together albums because albums in a way are a sort of distillation of a part of what you do obviously a very important part. How do you go about Album making often, I mean, now, you know, when I listen to albums, I'm like, I'm not so interested in the theme so much, you know, it's more, it seems like a lot of people whining about their love life or something, you know, it just doesn't go very far for me, you know, and so I've been having more fun in terms of making different kinds of sound, like doing this um, installation, which will be part of Meltdown, which uses many different kinds of audio, some spoken, some almost rumbling, some kind of musical things, but very different experiences that, of how voices relate to music. And it's also, it's a way for me of finding um, circuits. You know, as, as a talking artist, I get very bored with my own voice. And I think, who else could I have talk for me? So in this case, a computer parrot is talking and he goes on for hours. There's very tinny filters of tiny voices coming out of phones, and they're booming voices coming out of a large, larger kind of area. A voice that whispers into your ear through a pillow, more ambient, big, ooh, ooh, kind of. They are really, really excellent, so 
Very nice fabrics. Very nice colors. They are such smart people and they so taste. Sometimes, hard work is judged by using words. Here's how it works. This picture is worth 1500 words. This one is worth three words. That picture over there is worth a paragraph. Do you consider putting that on, on this? I don't think it would make a lot of sense. This is a, and it, fortunately, you know, not everything can be translated onto a disc. It's such a relief. So the speed of darkness ever find its find its way onto? I don't know. I, I I go to a lot of trouble to to pack my equipment and go places, and do it in the old style way instead of you know putting it on a on a disc. I think it. Well, I, I'm just a sucker for live stuff. What Fassbinder film, he says. The one-armed man comes into the flower shop and says, What flower expresses? Days go by, and they just keep going by endlessly, endlessly pulling you. Days go by endlessly, endlessly pulling you into the future. And the florist says, White Lily. Laurie Anderson with the track White Lily from her recent album The Ugly One with the Jewels on the Warner's label and that concludes our feature with her and for those of you who are interested the Meltdown Festival continues at the South Bank until the 6th of July.